Hello everyone, uh, my name is Michael. I'm a senior developer evangelist at GitLab and in today's session I want to walk you through efficient DevSecOps workflows with reusable CI CD components. Just as a disclaimer up front, I'm recording this on, on January the 2nd on 2024 and this will be a, de a developer relations maintained slide deck throughout FY25, so 2024 to, to say the least. Um, this is me, a uh, short introduction, you can find me on social media. Um, and also disclaimer, everything I'm sharing in this deck might change. So if you're planning to um, get GitLab, install it, maintain it, wh whatever, um, please review the release uh, cycle um, and do not rely on this slide deck. But let's dive into what does efficient DevSecOps actually mean? Wha what is like what what can we improve uh, about this? And DevSecOps is all about speed. So consider the following question, like how quickly can an engineer in the organization set up a CI CD pipeline or even like analyze a pipeline and optimize it based on the learnings? Um, and then consider like document the learnings for the team. Um, so it's really important to like consider these pillars like the discoverability using some certain AI tooling, Google Stack Overflow, wh whatever comes to mind, even like GitLab Duo Chat, um, how to use um, CI CD, like have a readme MD in, in the repositories or in the projects. Um, maybe there's a wiki available, maybe there's, maybe there's external documentation. Um, and CI CD components, or like not CI CD components, but DevSecOps in general, we want it to be reusable. So um, I don't want to reinvent the wheel all the time, and the idea is really like, can I share it with others? Because we are, uh, we are collaborating, we want to get it get more efficient. Now, um, one of the ideas is like, we want to streamline and automate pipeline creation. So it should be easy to assemble using pipeline components. And it also, also should be consistent and repeatable. So it's not like everyone builds their own pipelines and every team is like in a silo, but we really want to follow the DevOps or DevSecOps principles here. So um, pipelines and components should be shareable, reusable and discoverable, um, especially across teams to improve the collaboration and, and also as a, as a benefit, increase DevSecOps efficiency. Um, but what does this mean? Um, let's have a deeper look into CI CD efficiency specifically. So continuous integration and continuous delivery or deployment. Um, and one of the things we thought about at GitLab is like, there is a CI CD, we want to create a CI CD catalog, uh, which is a collaborative platform and provides an index or a collection of CI CD components across the entire organization, which then helps with these components, with discoverability. Um, you can immediately see the available components. So you have a single source of truth. Um, there is reusability. So you know where to look when you want to like reuse something or create something and also the ease of contribution. So I can add my own components, but I can also like review existing components, contribute new features, um, optimizations and whatnot. So it's really like a, a cross collaboration effort uh, to maintain the CI CD catalog. The other term to uh, keep in mind is like a CI CD component, uh, which provides me with the component documentation and the component uh, content, if you will, or anything that is distributed within the component, um, which then helps like to understand the purpose of the component, to understand how to use it. So there should be some usage documentation uh, in the component. I get a version overview, so I can define which version I want to be dependent on or which component version I want to use and not break my workflows with using late the latest include all the time. Um, and I also get a sense of how it's uh, be like to contribute to the component, how to test it, um, how to like use it in my own environment. So the user journey should be like, I want to adopt the components. I want to really like get into that. Um, and in order to understand that better, there's like a common path of this adoption journey. You have to pipe the templates um, as part of the pipeline configuration, which exists today. Um, the components, which are now new uh, to this uh, adoption path, this is like a reusable unit of pipeline configuration. Um, 
and the catalog itself um, is a collection of projects that provide components um, within the global instance scope um, as, as of now. So think about this, like remember these specific terms uh, while we walk through um, what is actually a component, how to migrate, how to use it and, and so on. So let's look a let's have a look inside a component, which means um, understand the structure. So how does a component look like? Um, it requires a certain directory structure. It provides a specification for metadata and inputs. So I can create dynamic inputs for components. We'll tackle that in a bit. We have template definitions. So it, anything that you have today already in a CI/CD template can be migrated into a CI/CD component, or at least not everything. But uh, the idea is really to provide a new foundation, a new layer for that. Um, and it's simple. You can create a project in GitLab, turn it into a component, and use the exact same workflows you're used to, like testing a component using GitLab CI CD, uh, documenting a component using, for example, the web ID in GitLab to edit the README MD, um, and so on. So this this is really really great in the screenshot on the right hand side you can see an example how i started creating my first component for rust um, as a programming language just with like uh, the spec header with inputs i didn't have any so i just specified the keyword um, and the the yaml configuration after the three hyphens um, or dashes at the bottom which essentially looks like a CI/CD configuration like you're used to the build latest and the test latest, jo latest job using the stages using a container image uh, to run the containers in and run cargo build and cargo test which is the rust uh, uh, build chain using uh, which is much easier to to consume but there is more to that so we we have the specific template structure um, and project structure for a component um, but I thought of like, okay, let's try something more practical and refactor something from a blog post, which I recently wrote about uh, using GitLab Duo uh, code suggestions to learn Rust, uh, which also had like a an example uh, configuration for Rust. Um, and I thought of maybe there's a way to refactor that into a component already um, or apply best practices. So. I sat down and said, well, okay, what is the what does the Rust component provide me here? Um, I looked at the documentation, which is already in great shape. Um, I created a GitLab project, and then there is a directory tree to being applied. So if you want to provide templates, which is the first component type that is available, um, you create a uh, directory called templates, uh, and then add a component template name in there. And I chose to call it Rust-Basic, because I wasn't sure about the, the initial naming structure um, and then decided to add like a readme.md uh, to document how to use the component and add that uh, dot gitlab dash ci.yaml to test the component at a later point. So this is the initial structure and to be honest, probably you will just need the templates and the readme.md. Um, the first iteration uh, for the Rust component was to really extract like what is the basic functionality. So the minimal viable change for me was to say, um, I want to have a spec. I don't know what inputs are, so let's just use empty inputs for the moment um, and optimize that later on or even like understand it later on. Um, the two jobs provided the stage image and script. Um, so like the the most simplest way to run a CI CD job and no optimizations. Um, you can find um, the slides publicly and also the links on there. So you can use that for learning. Um, and also like as a rem reminder, this, uh, the three dashes or hyphens in, in the screenshot are important to separate the, the header between um, the actual configuration. So this is all great. So the first, com let's assume that the Rust component works on its own. How to consume a Rust component? Uh, uh, how to consume a CI/CD component? Um, and this is important to understand. You can reuse the existing uh, CI/CD configuration language in GitLab. It's just um, you you you're not including a template um, or a specific file path, but you are including a component. And 
the main difference for a component is you provide the component project path, which is a little longer in this example, but shows that you can also use uh, subgroups um, and you're not bound to like the top level namespace or top group. Um, and the other thing to highlight is on, on the right hand side, you can see the Rust basic name again, um, which is the exact component template which which is provided in the directory tree so the project is named rust basic and the the template is also named rust basic um, just to keep that in mind the only uh thing that is uh, removed from that path is like the templates directory so there's an automated lookup in in the background that you don't need to type template slash uh, all the time and the for me the most interesting part here is i can write at and then the tagged version or the tagged release um, of the component. So I can really depend on, or I can really use just the version I tested. Um, and when the upstream maintainer of the component decides, hey, I'm releasing not uh, 0.5, but 0.6 or 1.1.0 or whatever semantic version will be used, I can um, incrementally test that in my environment and then consider rolling it out into my environment, which is a great way because I don't consume uh, breaking changes all the time. There is a way to consume the latest uh, tag release. So this is in the documentation, but typically you really want to uh, not use latest, but instead a tested and trusted release, which is also an important um, consideration for uh, environments that need to follow compliance um, and security pr uh, security measurements uh, where using latest is just forbidden and you need to use a tagged version. Now consider to think about optimizing uh, the Rust component um, and the, the two jobs are using build and test and they're testing the, the latest version which is something to optimize later on but the first thing is like maybe the stage name is not always build and test. Maybe you want to modify that because in your environment it's called build container or build something else and test um, is called maybe a unit test stage or something else. Um, so the idea is in this case to use the header with the spec and define the inputs. So you're defining the, the inputs name like stage underscore build and uh, stage underscore test. And you also have the option for inputs, uh, which is a specific new add-on or into the GitLab CI CD configuration language. You can define a default value. Um, so you don't need to define it all the time. And you can also define the description, which is helpful to generate documentation later on. Um, and also immediately like see um, what what is required or specific uh, adding a note on specific uh, examples or syntax uh, notation or something specific that is that is helpful uh, to the to the user to, co to the consumer of the component um, and the second change that needs to be done is like accessing um, the input needs a specific uh, syntax which is like a dollar and uh, two brackets and then accessing inputs dot and the variable name. Um, so this is something you need to practice and uh, yeah, use in, in, in production actually. Um, and it's a great way to create a reusable component, instrumenting it with our own values. Um, in order to validate that, um, there is a way to test the component. Um, which can be done in an external project, which I did in this example. We will also learn how to test it directly inside the components project in a bit. Um, but really like in order to test that, I created some like fake values and set this, uh, the stage for build to build and the stage for test also to build to verify that the, the, uh, that the two jobs are in the same stage, which they were have been created in. So um, this is like a great way to, um, especially in the beginning, starting with CI/CD components to verify that the, uh, that the uh, inputs are actually processed, that are valid. Sometimes I, I also made some typos or copy paste errors and I was wondering why, why it doesn't work. 
let's create a consumer project, test the component, um, figure things out. Now, the great thing about this is um, you can even like go further and say, well, I don't want to always run uh, the latest test or the latest Rust version in this example. Maybe let's provide a parameter, which is Rust underscore version or not a parameter, an input um, default to the latest tag, um, but use it for the container image, which will be uh, pulled from Docker Hub in this example and just allow the user to pass uh, the image tags. Um, I don't know exactly, I think Rust is 121, no, 121. Um, no, it's actually 172, something like that. So there's a way like I can test different versions of Rust compiling my software with, because sometimes uh, newer programming language versions provide more syntax or provide a specific keyword. Uh, but you have to support different compiler versions and, and uh, Rust build frameworks. So this can be helpful to use the same component but test different versions, um, which is shown in this example by using inputs and accessing uh, the value for the image, just using the string Rust uh, colon and then the version for Rust, um, which creates um, uh, a dynamic name for the container image but also allows you to, for example, create dynamic job names. So build dash uh, 172, for example, and not just latest, uh, which is like, I think it's a, it's a feature request which has been open for quite some years now uh, to create dynamic job names, uh, which is now possible through inputs as well. Um, in order to verify that, I've created uh, or I've modified the consumer project again um, and not only like added the uh, uh, the Rust basic in this specific version um, with like the default values, but added, for example, one that uh, specifies the Rust version to 172.0 um, and one for uh, 171.0. So it's testing different versions. And on the left-hand side, you can see the configuration. On the right-hand side, you can see that the uh, uh, the build and the build job and the test job are using different um, version notations, including latest, which is still there. Um, and yeah, I think the uh, the stage build uh, test should be actually it should be uh, latest should also be in test. Um, this is a, an error in the screenshot. I need to fix that. But you get the idea. You can instrument that and test different Rust versions. Um, and also change the stages and so on from the inputs. Um, in order to optimize the CI/CD component, um, this is not like you shouldn't start optimizing before like understanding how the basic component works. So this is still like a, an adoption journey from um, the basic structure of CI/CD components and then refactoring them and testing them and so on, similar to how you start a software project. Um, for example, you can split a single template into job specific templates uh, to perform the build and the test jobs and then only refer to them in your existing pipelines. Because sometimes there could be the case you only want to like build the, the Rust code, but you don't want to test it. I mean, you always should be testing it, um, but maybe there's like a lint job or some specifics um, that you don't need. And it's also easier to test the CI CD component. Um, if you have uh, more encapsulated uh, jobs in that regard. You can also add more inputs, you can add caching, you also should avoid global settings. So a component uh, template and job should be consistent on its own. Um, and yeah, there's, there's plenty of things and we are working on improving the documentation to help you optimize uh, your CI CD components as well. Now, Considering that a CI/CD component also needs consumers and like the versions, we need releases. So we need to test, document, and release a component, which means like, how do I test a component? Well, uh, the idea is really to test the component in CI/CD in the same project as the component lives actually. So you shouldn't be using, or you shouldn't have the need to create a consumer project for every component you're building, but you want to like, build um, and test in itself, if you will. It's like CI CD inception at some point. 
Um, but the idea is really like uh, the GitLab CI YAML for the component includes uh, the same project using the CI commit SHA in that, in that example, just to ensure it's, it's always using the same uh, commit reference um, of the latest changes of the components. So you can test different things. Um, and I also copied in um, the include component with the different uh, stage inputs, the different Rust versions, um, so it's more like defining extreme cases for all the different inputs and then verifying the output. Um, and um, this is something to consider like adding on top before releasing a component, add the testing of the component. Um, sometimes you also might have the need like in the Rust uh, component, which, which we discussed earlier, uh, you actually need some Rust code that can be compiled in order to test the, the CI/CD component. And my recommendation here is use a simple version or use an existing project, um, use that source code, copy it into the environment of the CI/CD uh, CI/CD component. For Rust, it's relatively easy to just run cargo in it on the terminal in the same project and edit uh, the cargo.toml configuration file edit uh, the source slash main.rs um, for example changing that to hello component like shown in the screenshot and then have uh, the rust basic uh, component um, configured and the gitlab ci yaml actually test the component so like if we are changing back to this slide um, you can see like this is the configuration for testing the component this is the configuration um, for providing the source code in the component um, and as a last step before we move on like into the final testing we also need to provide documentation for the component so uh, the readme.md should follow best practices in the documentation explaining the purpose of the component explaining how to use it like include component and so on provide an overview of the in available inputs their default value and the description so like an inputs table um, and also instructions like for testing and development and contributing, um, which is also helpful um, to, to allow others to use your component, but also contribute um, to make it even better. And I mean, it's the, the principle of open source. Um, everyone can contribute. Uh, if you want to add the Rust component to the CI/CD catalog, there is a specific setting uh, for the project. You need to add a description and then in visibility project features permissions, you can enable uh, the component as a catalog resource, um, which is described in the documentation as well. Um, but this is needed uh, to make the component visible in the catalog. Now, in order to release a component, and this screenshot looks a little like overwhelming but trust me it's really like it's automated using GitLab CI CD on its own you add uh, a job into CI CD into the CI CD configuration for the component and the only action is then to create a git tag which you can either do on the CLI or in the UI use semantic versions for that in, in the screenshot I uh, published uh, the Rust basic component as a version uh, 0.7.3 because I made some mistakes before and uh, so I decided to release a minor version of that. Everything else will be done by the CI CD configuration, by the release uh, CLI, which is used in the background. It uploads uh, and publishes the release into uh, the CI CD catalog. And I, as a user, can like continue developing the software and or not the software, the CI CD component, and then just tag, tag a new release, CI CD kicks in, everything is automated. I can focus on uh, the, the more interesting things like adding new functionality, uh, testing things and so on. Now for the visibility, um, when the uh, component has been published, you can view that or you can find it in the CI CD catalog as a global resource. So uh, one of the entry path, paths getting there is you search, uh, where you, you use the menu with search and go to, um, and then navigate into explore and CI/CD catalog, um, or you bookmark uh, 
the URL, which is shown for, for gitlab.com SaaS. On the other side, uh, for your instance, it might just be gitlab.example.com slash explore slash catalog. Um, so yeah, this it provides a search um, in, in the minimal version. Um, there might there will be coming more to that, like filters and, and so on, but um, recommend following uh, the direction pages and linked issues in that bigs uh, to stay in touch. And you can also test that as a, if you if you open the, the catalog just now, type in Rust, you will probably find the basic uh, component in, in a future iteration, hopefully uh, a GitLab maintained component for Rust, um, which I will be working on. Now, um, what is the user value for using CI/CD components and catalogs? It, well, you can have building building blocks. So different programming languages provide many different ways uh, to lint, build, test, um, and components can implement best practices and sometimes opinionated best practices, but it's necessary that someone takes the first step and says, this this is how we build a Rust component, this is how we build a C++ project, this is how Golang, Java, whatever comes to mind um, works. And it might be, uh, it can be like made dynamic for our environments to fit different teams, to maybe even fit like different projects consuming it on on the public catalog on gitlab.com SaaS. Um, you can also add efficiency best practices like using caching or using some uh, uh, thing about like test generation or some some regular expressions for te unit test reports um, something where you where I usually need to open my browser search and say well I want to add this one and then it's in the documentation, but it would be awesome if it's just a default, I don't need to configure that. Um, dynamic workflows is another example. So really like creating one component, have different vers versions as input to test, have different data paths to test, have maybe even like have a dynamic component that can execute any script in a specific environment. Um, you also have version control, which is like you don't run latest and break things. Um, there is like this dependency, there are automated tests and there's visibility into things. So y you always know I'm using this component, I'm using the pipeline editor, I'm working with CI CD um, and this is the tagged version in the C visible in the CI CD catalog. Um, and you don't have to worry about like this URL might be including something and I'm not sure w if it's the latest or not. It's really like transparency is also important, um, building efficient DevSecOps workflows. Now, considering that there are many more use cases um, and we're just getting started with CI/CD components and the catalog, um, I would like to inspire you for your own CI/CD components. So for example, um, for container image builds, Docker and Docker, um, Podman, uh, Kaneko is also pretty popular for, for building container images. Um, programming languages might be including best practices. Do an inventory of your existing environment. Think about what could be added to a CI CD component. Um, for continuous releases and deployments, so like whether it's uh, Terraform, Open Tofu, um, specific other infrastructure as code uh, deployments, or even like Kubernetes integrations. Um, consider adding observability best practices, collecting metrics, traces, specific other things that fit into a CI CD component. Then, from a security angle, um, enable uh, SALSA, S bomb verifications and, and also generation. Maybe there's a way to like consider embedded hardware. And I do know like using GCC on ARM um, embedded hardware might be more challenging or is more of a challenge than doing it on the Linux uh, environment. Yeah, data science and machine learning and MLOps, anything which comes to mind and can be automated with CI CD could be a CI CD component. Um, could also be something like, um, I do remember uh, Brandon, Brandon O'Leary uh, was automating his toaster for breakfast uh, with GitLab many, many years ago. Could also be a way to think about uh, what could be a practical use case uh, for using and creating CI/CD components? Now, um, I mentioned component types earlier. Um, the first component type, which is 
ready for use and already exists. These are like templates. Um, work in progress are steps or CI steps uh, where you can like find the architecture and uh, the experiment feedback, which is currently implemented. But I would also recommend checking out the direction page, uh, which explains in detail what is coming here. Um, there is also a specific direction page for expanding the, the catalog resource types, discussing whether there should be something like container images, assets, anything that could be a building block inside a CI-CD pipeline. Um, but this is to be defined and I would encourage you to check out the linked resources, discuss and comment into the epics and issues and help us build um, and create CI-CD pipelines efficient uh, CI-CD pipelines with using components and the catalog. Um, there's also a specific glossary um, linked on the slide here so you get to understand what are steps, what are units, what are components and so on. This is helpful to dive in, um, especially because everyone can contribute so you can start creating your own component. I've linked a few resources just over here um, and it's also possible to convert a CI-CD template into a component um and much much more and we also started um the uh development guide for gitlab ci ma gitlab maintain ci cd components um, where you can also like have a peek in and and see how we are building that and also dog fooding it and if you say michael this was great everything is fine um i i would say get start uh, get started tomorrow um or today um if you want to stay for a little while I also have a short migration workshop, which I will walk you through. Will walk you through just now, so you can understand how to migrate um, a CI/CD template into a GoLang um, CI/CD component. This is something I did in the past few weeks, um, and still learning and still improving. Um, but this is the first iteration of how to migrate um, a GoLang CI/CD template to a component. So without, without further ado, let's have a short look how it's possible. Again, the slides are public, so you can learn and benefit from that. And the video I'm recording now will embed it into the documentation and uh, available tutorials, hopefully in the future as well. So if I want to migrate a CI-CD component, it's important to follow these steps. Analyzing the existing CI-CD template splitting the jobs into specific component templates like making it organize everything optimize with dynamic inputs when necessary test the component with source code so we need some golang uh, or go source code here and then release the component after everything has been tested these are like the main steps um, not to overwhelm yourself with things um, but it's really like getting the idea how to practically get things done and when I looked at migrating a CI-CD template, I looked at the Go uh, template that is provided currently by GitLab itself. Um, on the right hand side, you can see like the definition. Um, it uses uh, a global image keyword for Golang and the latest tag, different stages. There is uh, a format job and a compiled job. And um, the format job, for example, um, uses go format go vet and also go test and yeah test is test should be a specific other uh, test job or ci cd job so one of the ideas is like we want to split that um, the compiled job is actually running go build which is a little confusing so we might be renaming the job to follow the the go command pattern here and say this is the build job um, and last but not least, point number one was uh, the image configuration is global. We need to consider moving that into the job definition itself. Um, so these are like three things to consider using or looking at the existing CI CD template now. Um, next step is define the optimization strategies. Um, looking at the template here is and, and thinking about what we learned just now about CI CD components we want to configure the stage attribute. Um, so defining where the jobs should be put into, make it dynamic. Um, the image attribute hard codes the latest tag. Um, maybe change that to Docker Hub image tag inputs or 
specific custom version tags um, that our environment is using. For example, in a self-managed instance, there are specific build images for go available using a different semantic versioning um, syntax. So this can also be something which is customized to your environment, um, but also helpful to not consume the latest tag. And just as an, uh, as an explanation why using the latest tag is not probably not a good idea. Um, for example, you have source code, which works. It works this week. Next week, you pull again the latest version, which is a different release. Um, the builds are failing and you, you think like, hey, my source code is actually failing. Um, but then again, one week later, you pull another version of latest of the container image where they fixed something in the operating system in the container and the source code works again. But you have spent debugging like half a day, four hours, um, where they're finding out like, hey, my Golang code actually works. It's not uh, it's not reproducible in, in different CI CD jobs um, and locally. And this can be avoided by just using uh, tagged versions and um, upgrade the build infrastructure or like the build platform um, only in release, in, in specified release cycles. So it can always depend on my software is tested with the same container image. Um, and in order to optimize even more uh, for a CI CD component migration, the compile job uses a hard coded binary output path. And this could be something, maybe it shouldn't be my binaries, it should be something else, depending on the, on the environment where other jobs are picking up the binaries, creating a release um, tarball or building a container image for releasing that, or even like deploying it directly into a Kubernetes environment. And the binaries should live somewhere else. So we want to make that configurable um, as well. Now, um, how would we go about the template directory structure? Um, I was thinking of like one template for each job, format, build and test. Uh, we want to create a project. We want to initialize it as a Git repository and then um, create like the template tree for, for the templates and create additional best practice files. So by best practice files, I mean readme.md, license.md, uh, the GitLab CI, CI CD configuration, a git ignore file, basically anything that is helpful for the initial structure. Um, and we can also use a little trick with GitLab, git remote add origin and then the, the, the project URL and pushing that. Um, if you're using, uh, I think it's at, at least uh, HTTPS, um, it will automatically create uh, the project as private for you on your instance. So you don't need to like create the project in the UI first and then do git push, but this works out of the box, which is helpful to to get started rather quickly with um, initializing uh, component structure. The next step is start with probably the most challenging job, create the build job template or create the build component uh, template, um, which should define like we want to modify the stage, we want to modify the Golang version and the binary directory sh for the outputs should be, should be configurable as well. Um, in this example, spec inputs defines the inputs and um, then there is like the key is the name and we're defining the default and the description to provide uh, documentation for consumers. The actual job is then defined like as build dash and using the Golang version for dynamic um, job name generation. Basically a lot of things are dynamic now because the image is using a specific Golang tag, the input, uh, the, the stage is using the inputs.stage and the script is also accessing like the binary directory to create the directory if not existing using an mkdir um, dash p. Um, the dash p means uh, creates the directory tree if not existing and go build uses dash o to define where to write the binaries and the artifacts path is important to um, collect uh, the binary artifacts and provide it either to the user in the front end or to pass it along into different uh, CI CD jobs, which can be configured in the pipeline in, in a different component or directly. So this is quite a lot of things to consider, um, but it's helpful like to, to get an idea 
how to get started. Once this works, we can either start like testing the component um, or continue with the migration of the other jobs. Basically the format job or the format template inside the component follows the same pattern, um, but it limits the inputs to stage and Golang version and runs different commands for that. So format uh, runs go, uh, go FMT and go FET um, and can still like, this is just the first iteration. You can optimize it later on. The test template, uh, test job template in the component follows the same pattern as, as said, just executes a different uh, command for go test, uh, dash race and so on. So it's, it's repeating itself, but it's great uh, to have that available. Um, and the remaining step is to test the CI CD component. So the first step is like really checking out whether the, um, the component and the inputs um, depend on or use different input uh, values like stage or Golang version. Um, there's one specific example with Golang version 1.21 which I think is the, the latest uh, release at the time. It's using a, a Docker Hub image tag as well. So needs to follow that syntax. And um, in, this, in this shown example here, you need to replace uh, example.com, uh, example.gitlab.com with your instance URL or just use gitlab.com and then use the predefined CI CD variables um, in order to always test the same commit version as the component itself. And this should be uh, should be uh, done, or you should be done with it, but you're actually not exactly done with it. But in because in order to test the Golang or Go component, you need to add some source code. Um, so when you run Go build, Go expects to have like uh, a main.go file um, or something similar. So um, in the main directory, you should have like go.mod, so to manage the modules, which you can like initialize running go mod in it, and then the URL to your Golang project, which is the CI CD component, and um, a main.go file. And in this example on the screenshot, I was just using uh, GitLab Duo code suggestions to write um, a short heading using double slashes Say, uh, and instructing AI to uh, generate some code for myself because I was a little too lazy in that regard and it's more efficient, even more efficient using uh, in DevSecOps using different methods um, here. Specify the package, import, the requ import required packages, create a main function and inside the main functions print hello CI CD component. Um, and I think if you repeat the steps, you don't need to understand Go that much. You can still provide the CI CD uh, component to your users, to your developers. For example, if you're maintaining a platform, your platform engineer, DevOps engineer, what, what, whoever or whatever your title is, you might still be able to test the component by just generating some, some Golang code that works, which I think is like helpful. Now that the code has been generated or been created, you can actually like run the source code and in order to like do that, we want to verify the results and also add documentation. So you can commit and push the change, add the documentation for best practices for the usage and for inputs, then release the component and then consume the component um, in a staging or production environment or both. Um, on the right hand side, you can like see the tree which uh, the Golang component should look like using like a git ignore file, a GitLab CI configuration file, there's a license, a readme, a go.mod. Um, you will also see um, a go.sum uh, when you have external dependencies, which the current example didn't have. The main.go file and then different templates for build, format, and test um, inside the component. If you run that, um, you will like find different um, stages being added, so like format, build, and test inside the component. Um, you can also see the create release job at the end, which um, has been an addition to the pipelines in the component, which is also best practice. Now, um, if you want to reproduce what I just showed you with the Golang component, feel free to like check out the public slide 
which are linked here or also provided using uh, the QR code. Other than that, um, if there are any questions, like reach out um, on the public uh, community forums on Discord, um, provide feedback in, in the CICD components catalog issue. Um, and yeah, start building your components. Um, we will see, we will s hopefully see them in, in the global catalog on gitlab.com or um, some, somewhere else, like blog about it, share, share it. Thanks for your attention um, and see you next time.